Hey everybody and welcome back. In the last part we did some stuff in Pokemon Tower and we ended up fighting Team Rocket for some reason. So in this part we're going to finish fighting Team Rocket. <laughs> um, and they're not much more difficult to be honest than they were in Game Corner in the Rocket's hideout. You know, Rock, it's high, da 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 So yeah, well they do have- oh good, their Pokemon have evolved, that's kind of nice. Like, watch, Haunter is going to just make mincemeat out of these guys. Like, watch this. Watch this. Like, if I use this, like, I can just see, like... Well, no, here comes, like, James is going to, like, send out Weezing now. <laughs> what am I talking about? James is going to send out Weezing now. Oh, look, how come Coughing looks so happy and Weezing looks so, like, sad? I don't know. Well... Let's put you out of your misery, Weezing. Like, you know, like, even in the anime, Coughing looks so happy and Weezing looks so sad. So sad. Well, here we go, he's dead, and I can just imagine James, like, doing that thing he used to do. Whenever, like, something happened that was bad, he used to go, like, <laughs> Do you know, like that crazy, like, little screamy thing he used to go, where he was like, <laughs> I'm doing a really bad impression of it, but that's what he used to do. <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna do it again. You will regret this! That's what Jesse said, probably. Looks like Team Rocket's blasting off again! Meow, that's right! Wabba wabba wabba! <laughs> well, who's this old man? Christopher Lloyd? Misa Fuji! Hey, you came to save me! Thank you, but I came here of my own free will! I came to calm Sore of Kubon Mother. I think Marowak's spirit has gone to the afterlife. I must thank you, must I thank you for your kind concern. Follow me to my home, Pokemon House at the foot of this tower. <laughs> Sorry, Chinese Embassy on line one, jeez. Or oh, Repel's effect wore off, well that doesn't matter. That just reminded me of... In one of those Sweet Victory, just Sweet Victory, is it Sweet Victory 117? Like, they're, um... They're like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles LP. <laughs> like, when he was fighting <laughs> that guy. <laughs> he just kept saying over and over again, Tatsu no like you, Remonade! <laughs> like, over and over again. Tatsu like a Coca-Cola! Like, over and over again. And it was literally, I was just sitting here in stitches, <laughs> laughing, because it was just so, like, politically incorrect. Well, not by my standards. I have really low standards. Like, I have really low standards. And a really debased sense of morality to boot. But I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> Literally, for like about 10 minutes, the guy was just going there like, That's you not like a lemonade. <laughs> like, over and over again. <laughs> oh, God. Well, it's that time already. We're going catching our next Pokemon. And we're actually, like, we're actually going catching all the rest of our team now. So, that's kind of funny. Well, let's get out Pikachu out in front, why not? You know, there's no reason not to. But the next Pokemon is actually quite hard to catch, so... <laughs> Don't expect any anything brilliant. And I think you can all guess what it's going to be just by me walking down here, so... Or do I have to fight these jerks? I can't even remember what I stopped at. Okay, I think I've been recording for like five and a half minutes. Oh look, there's the guy who looks like Mr. Miura from Bakuman. Speaking of Bakuman, Bakuman is one of the best mangas I've ever read in my life. It is a brilliant, like anyone who like, reads manga and doesn't read that, I definitely recommend it. It is a brilliant, like all the characters are just so endearing. Like the characterization in that manga is brilliant because you know the way usually in manga or anime, the characters are just kind of hollow archetypes and stereotypes that don't really have a background. Well, in this, they're kind of... Each of the characters has a background and has a well-rounded backstory and has a definite personality and they're just so... Br the characterization is so brilliant. And, like, it's one of those mangas that like, when I find myself reading, I find myself, like, really feeling for the characters and really rooting for them or things like that. Like, Shiratori, I, like, I really want him to succeed and I'm like, oh my god, you have to succeed. It's your... it's your destiny. And like I like, and it's not set. It's set in the real world. You know, it's it's about two guys who are like writing a manga, basically. And it's just a kind of a slice of life kind of. It's brilliant. It's so so endearing. 
It's when maybe I'm just a big romanticist, but I think it's brilliant. Well, there's Mr. Miura. See you, small fry. That, as far as I know, that's like the TM that teaches payday. Who would want that? Let's go up here and dodge this guy. But, um, I'll go down here and dodge that guy. See if I can dodge them all. No, gotta dodge them all. Well, I don't. Well, I can dodge that guy. I'll come back and fight them later. Just for experience. You know, I'll come back and fight them later. You know, because the Irishman talks like this. <laughs> and here we go. Here's Snorlax. I don't know if I have enough time to fight this guy, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save on screen. How dastardly of me. <laughs> Though I don't know why, because there's another Snorlax that I could catch. And what I'm going to do is just with the polka flute that I got off Mr. Mi Miyagi back there, I'm going to play... Instant joy! Who can't listen to that tune that the poke flute plays and um, just not feel happy? It's such a charming little tune. Boo doo 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 doo. It's just so happy. Oh, well, here's Snorlax. And why is he all pink? That's so strange. As you can see, he's level 30, and Snorlax is a bit of a monster. He's still a monster in Gen 4, like, and he, but he was a complete and utter monster in that game. Do you know, he really was, like, Snorlax was just such a beast, and that's why I'm catching him. Even though he's hard, because he does this, he uses rest. Um, actually, what I might do is I'm going to switch out to Haunter, because if I use Haunter, then Snorlax attacks can't hurt us, so... Enemy Snorlax is fast asleep! You nearsighted scrap pile! <laughs> you are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor! Dark Vader, like, I, I, like, I, I never agreed with the casting of, um, Anakin Skywalker in the first three parts, because I don't think he suits, like, I think Darth Vader was such a different character, you know, like, like, his voice and his accent and everything, and just the things he says, they were such a different character in episodes four, five, and six in the original trilogy, to, like, Anakin Skywalker in the prequel trilogy. I just think it was really ridiculous, so... I don't know, I think it was ridiculous anyway. Because when you think of, like, Anakin Skywalker, like, it's nothing to do with... Like, I don't know, it's just his voice is wrong. Because if you think of, like, him, he's all like, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. He's all, like, kind of like... I don't know, he's all that kind of troubled American crazy teen or whatever. Um, whereas, like, if you look at... Like, Darth Vader, he has that kind of... Well, he's not British, but he has that kind of, like, dropped ore thing going on. And he's... Do you know when he says things like, Now, Princess, we will discuss the location of your rebel base. Like, you couldn't imagine Anakin Skywalker in the in the prequel trilogy saying that. It just doesn't work. Come on, send him to sleep. Yay! I, like, tapped my feet there. I was like, yay! Like, you couldn't imagine him saying that. Um, so that's why I think it's kind of ineffective. I don't know. Yeah, stay asleep, you fat ass. You fat ass! Like, I didn't- that wasn't one word. That wasn't, like, fat ass in one word. It was, like, you fat ass! So, I don't know. I love Darth Vader's lines in the original trilogy. I, he definitely- he gets just the funniest lines of anybody. Like, that line where he goes, like, you were a traitor, and- or no, you were a part of the Rebel Alliance, and a traitor! And, like, in that part where he goes, Now, Princess, we will discuss the location of your rebel base. Of your hidden rebel base or something. It's just so ridiculous. <laughs> or, like... <laughs> oh, look, see, he's so hard to catch. But if you can keep him asleep or paralyzed, then your chances greatly improve. The only thing problem with paralysis is that he can use rest and get rid of that status condition. Um... But as long as, like, as long as Haunter is faster than him and is gets lucky with... Why are you not being caught? Why? What is it with the people here and their plants growing out of the wall? <laughs> like, <laughs> that was just a stupid thing I said before. Um, like that part where like he starts choking that guy who looks like Colomini. Um, and like Grand Moff Tarkin just goes, Vader, release him! And then, like, Darth Vader basically goes, like, Very well. Like, okay, why not? Like, he's just, like, that's such a silly reaction. I just think it's really funny. 
We only have six great balls left. You great balls of fire! Why aren't you being caught? I am getting angry now. Put the cookie down. I need like Arnold Schwarzenegger to come in and like monster up on Snorlax. Of course, the of course, you would get a critical hit. Oh my god. Well, Hunter, at least you grew to level 33. Snorlax calmed down with a big yawn and returned to the mountain. <gasps> Well, do you know what I'm gonna do? He can just piss off. I don't care anymore. Because Haunter, like, I'm going to- There's another Snorlax that you might have seen over where we got the Fly HM, and I'm gonna catch that one instead. Pfft, I don't care. Oh, there's Steven Tyler again. I haven't seen you since I beat Lieutenant Surge, that wimp. Pika! If I have to fast forward this, I don't care. I'm catching the next Pokemon from my team in this video. I honestly just couldn't care less whether I have to fast forward or not, even though I hate fast forwarding. Oh, Pikachu grew to level 33. Pikachu is trying to learn agility. No, fuck off. Would you just. No. Yes. Electrode. Electrode is also such a happy looking Pokemon. Some of the. Like, look at him, he's just like. Aah! He's just like he's just bounding towards you, going crazy. Like I don't know, he just looks nuts. He looks like he's just high or something. He's just crazy. Not high. He looks like he's on cocaine. He's just nuts. He's like ah! Ha! <laughs> Brilliant! Silly electrode. That sounds like a line from a sitcom. You're like, oh, you like a really old sitcom. You're like bewitched or something like that, where they go like, silly electrode. Oh! And then it'd stop. Or at the end of Murder, she wrote where it'd always end on like an image of her, like la of Angela Lansbury laughing, going ah, ha, 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 and would like freeze on that frame. Well, let's talk to you. I'm the fishing guru's brother. I simply love fishing. Do you like to fish? Me no like it to fish. That's so disappointing. Wait, I said yes. Didn't I? Do you like to fish? Yes. Of course I do. I like your style. You got moxie. Take this and fish, young one. Ash received a super eye. You know, because teach, give a man a fish and he'll eat for one day. Teach a man to fish and he'll eat for the rest of his life. Well, um... Well, in this part, we, like, did a load of crap. So I'm going to stop because I'm going to have to fast forward something. But in the next part, we'll use that super rod we just got to catch the next Pokemon that's going to be on our team because I've decided what it's going to be. Um, because I've decided what it's going to be. So, in the next part, I'll see you and we'll do that. Thanks very much for watching. This is Rock Paper Mario with Let's Play Pokemon.